As far as telescopes go, the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST for short, is no joke. Set to launch sometime next year, the Space Telescope not only sports a 6.5 meter diameter mirror that is three times larger than the one found on the Hubble Telescope, but also has improved infrared resolution and sensitivity that makes it exponentially more effective. Yet despite its great potential, there is still a lot that most people don't know about this cosmic innovation. So today we're going to be counting down the top 10 things to know about the James Webb Space Telescope on this episode of Super Freaky Science. But before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you never miss out on our latest videos. Number 10. The Magnificent Mirror Typically speaking, a space telescope can only be as good as its mirror, as the more light the mirror can collect, the more details the telescope can observe. As such, the James Webb Space Telescope is set to be revolutionary thanks to it using a mirror that is 6.5 meters in diameter, giving it a total surface area of 25.4 square meters. In contrast, its closest equivalent, the Hubble Space Telescope, has a mirror that is just 2.4 meters in diameter and about 4.5 squared meters of surface area. Yet one problem with such a large mirror is that it was deemed impossible to bring it up to space in one large piece, so as a result, it's been partitioned into 18 smaller hexagonal mirror segments made of gold-plated beryllium. This will allow the mirror to be folded up and then expanded once it's in space. Number 9. Infrared Astronomy While infrared astronomy is nothing new, the JWST is set to be a step above any existing technology in the field. Now put simply, infrared astronomy is the study of space objects via the infrared radiation they emit, and this is extremely useful because many space objects are not observable from Earth via regular UV rays. However, until now, many space telescopes have had a hard time contending with these rays because space dust can often obscure them. Yet thanks to a plethora of infrared instruments, it's believed that the JWST will be able to observe both near and mid-infrared wavelengths in the 0.6 to 28.3 micrometer range. Considering that this will enable the JWST to observe high redshift objects that are too old and too distant for the Hubble to observe, it will undoubtedly be an important asset to NASA's fleet. Number 8. Not the first of its kind. Now while the JWST is set to be one of the best infrared telescopes out there, it's certainly not the first. That's because the first infrared observations were made all the way back in the 1920s from astronomers such as W.W. Koblenz, Edison Petit, and Seth B. Nicholson. However, it was in 1983 that infrared astronomy really took off. That's because in this year, the Infrared Astronomical Satellite, or IRAS, was launched. From there, it wasn't long until the European Space Agency's Infrared Space Observatory took to the skies. With it being launched in 1999 and in 2003, an even more advanced piece of machinery, known as the Spitzer Space Telescope, was also blasted into space by NASA. However, since then, all three of these telescopes have been decommissioned, and as a result, it's the JWST that is set to soon take their place. Number 7. Location like many other things that are blasted into space, the plan is for the JWST to stay in Earth's orbit. But it will definitely be further out than most satellites, as it'll be located at a position that at one and a half million kilometers away is even further than the moon. Yet it's at this position that it will be able to stay at a temperature of about negative 232 degrees Celsius, which will be important in ensuring that the infrared sensors don't malfunction. As such, because the JWST will therefore always be positioned with the sun, earth, and moon on the same side, yet behind its sun shield, it will constantly be in a location that is optimal for celestial observation. Number six, the top side. As you could probably imagine, the JWST is a pretty complicated piece of machinery. Yet the main components of the telescope can essentially be broken down into two sectors. The first is the observation area located at the top, as this essentially contains all the equipment needed to detect and record infrared images. The segmented primary mirror, secondary mirror, and optical telescope component are the main elements, as they are what reflect the infrared light from various galaxies into the science instrument module. It's this module that's the brains of the telescope. 
as it contains all the sensors and cameras necessary to make observations. Yet in order to keep all of this equipment safe, some precautions are necessary. Thus a five layered sunshield and a trim flap for stability will also be present so as to ensure that none of the JWST's components malfunction. And speaking of malfunctioning, stick around to find out about the problems the JWST is gonna be facing later in this video. Number five, the solar power array. While the top side may contain the flashiest and most innovative parts of the satellite, all of the dirty work is done by the solar power array on the bottom side. Now the primary role of this section is to protect the rest of the satellite from solar rays, and as such, it's always pointed towards the sun. This is helpful because it allows it to make use of a sun shield that features ultra strong Captain E that is coated with aluminum and doped silicon on both sides, which enables the telescope to remain at a constant temperature of negative 220 degrees Celsius. Yet this solar array also has a number of other useful components. The most notable is probably the earth pointing antenna which has the invaluable task of beaming the data collected from the science instrument module to Earth. However, the spacecraft bus, which steers the telescope, and the star trackers, which help target the observatory, are essential as well. As such, it goes without saying that in tandem, these components all work together to make the JWST a top-of-the-line telescope. Number 4. Arion Space while Arion Space may not have the same prestige as a company such as SpaceX or Virgin Galactic, they play a very special role in the JWST mission. That's because they were subcontracted by the European Space Agency, who is working together with NASA on the JWST project to create an Arion 5 rocket that is compatible with the JWST. And as of now, it seems that the JWST has not disappointed, as the observatory is able to attach to the Ariane 5 rocket via a launch vehicle adapter ring, with this ring then having the potential to be used by any future spacecraft to grapple the JWST should any repairs have to be made on it. As a result, we think it's pretty cool that this French aerospace firm got the chance to work on such an important project. Number 3. Its Mission Every spacecraft has a space mission, and the JWST is unsurprisingly no exception. Now said mission can be separated into four key goals. The first, which is to search for light from the first stars and galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. The second, which is to study the formation and evolution of galaxies. The third, which is to understand the formation of stars and planetary systems. And the fourth, which is to study planetary systems and the origins of life. And while this may seem like a tall order to most, meeting these observations will most likely be possible thanks to the ability to delve into infrared astronomy, which is something that the current Hubble telescope does not have the ability to do. As a result, we just hope that the mission ends up being a success. Number two, its name. While James Webb certainly isn't a household name, he nonetheless still manages to get his name on the telescope due to his role as NASA's second administrator. In particular, he was the head of NASA during the golden years of spaceflight that occurred under the administration of President Kennedy and President Johnson, and as such, he played a key role in the Apollo space program. However, above all, he actively promoted the idea that scientific research, rather than military armament, was key to NASA's mission, and as a result, we think you'd agree that his aims and his legacy align well with that of the JWST mission. Number 1. Major Delays COVID-19 has been infamous for knocking practically everything off schedule, and unfortunately, the JWST was not immune to the virus's effect. This is because despite the mission having an initial launch date set for March of 2021, it was announced in July of 2020 that it would have to be pushed to October of 2021. As both a number of factors brought on by the coronavirus pandemic and several technical challenges have knocked the project off course. This is because both the number of factors brought on by the coronavirus pandemic and several technical challenges that have knocked the project off course. In particular, three months of the delay have been attributed to the coronavirus pandemic. Two were added for schedule margin, and another two were also included so that engineers could better understand, test, and reduce the risks associated with mechanisms such as the folding and storing of the telescope's sun shield. However, on our end, we just hope that this delay ends up being the project's first and last. That's all we've got on the James Webb Space Telescope. 
Let us know what you're looking forward to the most about this awesome telescope. Thanks for watching Super Freaky Science and don't forget to subscribe.